Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Zonai Device Tier List. Which ones are the best? Which ones are the worst? I'm going to give my thoughts based on my experience. And if you think different, please comment down below. This game is so complex. There's so much crazy stuff you can do in it. It's impossible for one person to know all the tech and everything that can be done. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends. So let's start off with the fan. Fan gets a solid A tier. You make flying contraptions, you can also make like the green goblin hoverboard and that just seems to be the best vehicle in the game. The only reason why it isn't S tier is that it drains a lot of power. So then you start getting into more complex builds where it's like, yeah, I slap a ton of fans, a ton of wings and balloons on things, use a large zone I charge and now I'm getting some distance and making like some kind of crazy flying machine hovercraft thing. But overall, like the fan, you can just slap it on a lot of builds, you use it to make a boat, you use it to make a glider, you use it to make anything, it's just one of the best A tier, easy. The wing. Now the wing is a bit trickier because it is a very necessary thing. You can slap some fans onto the wing, you give it a battery, taking off is a little tricky so that's going to hurt the score, but the durability is the biggest problem. So making a flying machine not as possible without the wing. So it's a super necessary item, but because of that, it's somewhat limited in how it can be used. You have to do like weird recall tricks. I just like using a cart. That way you can get some nice takeoff. So the wing has A tier necessity, but it goes into B tier because of the restrictions and limitations. Next up, we have the cart. And I'm kind of conflicted on the cart because it seems too simple for A tier. So like, B plus tier, A minus tier, these things are kind of arbitrary anyways, but it's just so useful. You deploy a platform. You can use it for gliders, you can use it for flying machines, you can use it for land vehicles. It says you just efficiently move over flat surfaces. You can even make hot air balloons with it. So just having a nice deployable platform with so much utility feels kind of A tier. Now putting in the same tier as fan doesn't feel quite right, but then again, the fan does drain a lot of energy, which pulls it down a little bit, and the wing has a lot of issues, so yeah, I think cart, A tier. Next up, we have balloon, also A tier, because making balloons, or like making hot air balloons in this game for vertical. Next up, we have the balloon. Next up, we have the balloon. Next up, we have balloons. I'm putting balloon in A tier because there's a lot of verticality in this game. And instead of like wasting a lot of energy or making like a too expensive, too complex flying machine just to get up, you just make a hot air balloon. Now you can go balloon, cart, flame emitter, or you can save a schematic from one that you find on the ground that has like the basket and everything. And you just keep using them everywhere. If you need to go up, quick deployment, super cheap, boom, goes up all because of the balloon. You can also use it to help elevate and relieve the stress on the gliders. In my experience, and I also did videos about this, like making flying machines and stuff, if the glider isn't like being directly used or stressed, it's not consuming durability. So like balloon, cart, wing, fan actually makes everything last longer. So the balloons, like it's a very vertical game getting easy, cheap verticality, also not expensive on the energy, just kind of makes it A tier for me. Next up, we have the rocket. I've seen people do things with the rocket. Rocket does have some utility towards like, oh yeah, you can use it to kind of kick off a wing, but that seems expensive and unnecessary to me personally. Also quite a bit finicky. I know people have made it work for builds, but it can also go terribly wrong. I just want to put rocket in the C tier. It just seems too unwieldy, too short-lived, too bursty, and doesn't really have like a global unanimous utility like some of the other things. Next up, we have the time bomb. I haven't found a use for the time bomb. I haven't really seen anything too crazy for the time bomb. That's just how bombs work. They're kind of finicky and dangerous. And for the builds, maybe there's something cracked here. Maybe there's like B tier potential, but so far it's like D tier, maybe C tier that it can do something, but haven't really found much use for them. Portable pot, solid B tier. It's not like something you're always going to use and only going to use, but if you need to make food in a pinch because you haven't stocked up or if there's a blood moon, you just have a couple of portable pots left over and you realize like, oh man, it's a blood moon right now. Just deploy them, make the food. It's not like the most insane thing, but it's just raw utility. So B tier. Flame emitter. Flame emitter also gets the B tier for me. It's good at melting mobs. You get the schematic that's like Roomba, Construct Head, 
flame emitter and it just kind of like takes out enemies super easily but then it can also kind of be dangerous you know if you're in the fray with this thing it's going to burn you up it's also going to light grass on fire it can detonate bombs so dangerous things are actually dangerous in breath of the wild and the game will find many hilarious different ways to screw you over flame emitter can be a good tool for melting mobs but can also kind of backfire so b tier even though like yeah you just it, it's pretty successful like it's a good tool you can just find some issues with it frost emitter i'm gonna put it in c tier i don't really know what to say about it a zone eye device that blasts out freezing air, handy for slowing and defeating some monsters. Some materials change their properties when exposed to very cold air. Haven't seen any kind of like crazy build with this just yet. Haven't seen anything too insane for like mob farming or whatever. Maybe some kind of exploit comes out and this thing immediately becomes A tier. If I'm just feeling C tier right now, like, yeah, if you need frost, you can use it for frost. Shock emitter is like a niche A tier because I did the video breaking down the dude that made a boat where you just put a shock emitter at the front of the boat and then he was able to go into a fish frenzy and automatically fish just like a dozen fish instantly. So like A tier on some kind of design like that. But overall usefulness is going to be closer to B tier. Once again, if like your machine swings into you and electrocutes you, that's bad. If it electrocutes the water and you get zapped to death because you don't have the rubber armor, that's bad. So like B tier, once again, kind of dangerous, very limited uses, but you can actually like use it for very specific builds and it's going to work at that. Also good at controlling mobs. You zap a mob with it, they're going to drop their weapons and you just have instant electricity, which has its own good utility. B plus tier, but very, very limited. Next up, we have the beam emitter. Is this the first S tier Zonai device? I want to say yes, because if you watched my mob farming guide, and if you haven't, I strongly recommend that. I also recommend like going in the description, going in the playlist, watching all the videos I've made because we are doing full coverage of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Subscribe, notification bell, all that fun YouTube stuff. But the beam emitter, if you just kind of like slap it onto something or you have like one or two on a mob farming machine, yeah, it seems pretty bad because it doesn't do enough damage. But if you put like six of them or more on a machine, it's going to instantly vaporize most mobs, also at a very long range. So you can just kind of deploy it and then wipe out a camp. Strength in numbers, it's good, S tier. Next up, we have the Hydrant. The Hydrant just kind of spits some water on a thing, feels D tier, maybe even F tier, but I have to give it the B tier. Once again, because of my Talus farming guide, that I just put a hydrant on a hover stone and then I gave it the construct head so it can like focus on the talus and then it extinguishes the igneo talus and it extinguishes it to where it can cause a stagger, it can cancel attacks, it's just really, really good. So you can use this for mob farming and if you're going to be going up against mobs that are weak to water or susceptible or you need to extinguish something, really, really good. Also used in the story, used for puzzles, yeah, like B plus tier. This might even be A tier if more uses are found or some kind of like crazy water hydrant tech is discovered. So yeah, hydrant, I thought it was going to be terrible, but it's actually really good. So that's the kind of thing you want to keep an eye out for. The, the sleeper Zona devices. Next up, we have the steering stick. Of course, this is S tier, one of the best devices in the game. Being able to manually control your flying machine, your vehicle, your giant crazy fighting robot is a necessity, especially with how like weird some of the contraptions you piece together are. If they get unwieldy, yeah, you can't control it. So you need control. The steering stick is cracked S tier. Big wheel, C tier. I haven't really found many more uses for the big wheel over the small wheel small wheel is quick it works it gets you around big wheel it's a big mean wheel that excels at tearing through environments that might challenge smaller wheels but you can still like find something too steep it's not like an all terrain kind of wheel going through shallow water doesn't really matter haven't really found too many scenarios where it's like oh man the big wheel is just better than the small wheel it, it moves slower still a bit more clunky and the thing is, like, you just make the hover cart. You just, you just make the two fan, one steering stick hover cart, and that's kind of going to outclass the big wheel in every situation. And minus the energy, it also kind of, like, trivializes the small wheel. So we have, like, C tier big, big wheel, B tier small wheel. It really just seems like everything is about flying contraptions and making, it, like, mob fighters. 
Making a simple bike, a scooter, or a four-wheeled vehicle doesn't really seem to be the play in this game. I mean, maybe like some kind of really cool tank designs come out, but even then, like just not as usable, not as nice. You can make a cool little scooter and get around, so B tier, not completely useless. But yeah, like there's just a lot of things that outclass it, especially for like how bumpy the terrain is and how complex some of the navigation is in this game. Next up, we have the sled. Is it C tier? Is it like low B tier? Like you can use it. It has some use. But once again, like making some kind of ground land vehicle really isn't that useful. The cart just seems better in a lot of scenarios. And you're not like in snowy areas or you're not like in special grass and sand terrain that has just the right heights where you're zooming down and then getting the most use out of the sled. Like maybe that's it. Like you have a sled on you. If it's like, hey, it's just faster to go down this hill on a sled and then you make it really quickly and you head down cool but that's very limited use people are kind of using it as shielding on mechs but i think that you can just find like better environmental shielding it's like c tier c plus because you can you can use it battery a plus tier the only reason why it isn't s is because it doesn't have a crazy amount of storage also it cost nine zonite if you want to put it into a schematic and if you're just trying to like rng gotcha machine with it you might not get the amount you're looking for. So it's like, yeah, it's it's just the expense is a little prohibitive, but overall, like you just slap batteries on your machines. They last a lot longer. You can design it to where like the machine gets as much use as it needs for as much battery. So like you put three batteries on something when those batteries run out, plus like your natural in-game energy meter. The device has served its purpose. So you can kind of wrap up designs with it pretty well. Yeah, battery just good like you you want batteries a plus tier big batteries however i'm giving it the d tier too rare too expensive why use a big battery when you can just use a large zone i charge that's pretty much been my experience i don't know if there's some point in like the ultra uber mega late game where somehow you have like 20 big batteries so you just need something to use them on and then you can kind of build builds off of that so after seeing them in the trailer, after thinking like, yo, if I can get a lot of these super easy for like builds, I won't have to worry about energy. But at the end of the day, again, just like too expensive, very limited use. I guess if you make something like really big and complex and it uses like a big battery and you can just kind of put it together and you have a couple of extra big batteries for niche deployment, maybe but at the end of the day, like you, you get tons of large zonite and then you can exchange it for a large charge and then you just get enough time. Mega overrated, and it's just kind of like, use them if you've got them, but they're also so rare, you don't really ever want to use them. Kind of, kind of weird. Then we have the spring. C tier? Like, I've seen some people try to do some cool things with springs, but seems fairly limited at this time, unless like some crazy cracked propulsion machine ends up coming out of it. I don't know, like, I just thought, I'm like, I don't see a lot of usage for the spring. Much like the other Zonai weapon add-ons, I have to give this the B tier. It's useful, and it kind of also covers for the beam emitter, because armored enemies won't get zapped by the beam emitter, but the cannon will blow them up. Problem is, bombs, dangerous, unwieldy, can blow you up, might blast enemies around, might just create some problems, also uses a lot of energy, but very useful when it works and even says you know can be tricky to get the fire angle just right even if you are going to be using a construct head might backfire on your design so you have to be very careful when using the cannon but when used correctly it's actually a very powerful zone eye device so all that i think b tier is fair stabilizer a tier not as ubiquitous and usable as the steering stick but is needed in a lot of contraptions especially if it starts getting kind of tall and unwieldy really good for kind of stabilizing vehicles as well and other devices that might otherwise tip over and it's like surprising like this thing will stabilize anything just get it back upright so pretty good a tier hoverstone much like the hydrant i thought the hoverstone was gonna be like useless trash the first time i got it i hit it i put some fans on it and it didn't go anywhere it just stays in place i thought the hoverstone was like oh it uses energy to just kind of stay even level and then you can just like make a contraption that drives straight you can't do that. So I'm like, useless? I don't know how you're going to use it. But then it ends up in the S tier for me because you can use it to make platforms that just work for fighting mobs. Turns out being able to put any Zonai device anywhere you want is really good, especially on combat machines because you can put it 
outside of danger, but keep it in the fight range, and then just, like, blast things with beam emitters, flamethrowers, cannons, and you can make it, like, high up in the air to where, oh, it's not gonna blow itself up with a cannon, so you can just rain artillery and bombs down on it. Yeah, uh, Hoverstone, a lot of use, and I think it's just gonna get more and more utility and use as people discover better and better things to do with it, but even, like, in its current state feels S tier on just how you can like deploy something and just set it there and you're you're winning. These next three for me are C tier because of the niche utility like yeah you can use light to light up areas and for puzzles and stuff but just having bright bloom seeds is way better. Also the lights can make it kind of awkward like there's that bike design where you can put lights on the side and it kind of stabilizes it but it makes it harder to go up like small terrain so lights kind of get in the way and they don't light up enough. Maybe the lights just actually like straight D tier because it doesn't really do anything. Stakes, maybe there's like some kind of cool use for a stake where like you just plant in something very powerful and unwieldy and just kind of like keep it stationary, but the Hoverstone just kind of outclasses it. Like maybe some stake tech makes it B tier, but like at, at the time, like C tier, you can use it to just kind of mount something. So I guess that's all right. Maybe some kind of like crazy wheel bay blade that would otherwise just kind of like blow itself apart. You hold down with a stake. Mirror. You bounce light around. It's cool to have a couple of them for puzzles if you can deploy them, and then that's kind of it. I think it's too niche to be anywhere else. Maybe it's got some B tier usage that I haven't seen yet, but yeah, mirror, it's whatever. After that, we have the homing cart. Kind of want to give it D tier, even though it's like really cool in theory where it can just run in and zap enemies or blow them up or flame them at them, but it only knows how to int. It only knows how to run in and get itself destroyed and take damage and stuff. Like, there's also a world where maybe you deploy multiple homing carts and then, like, you can KO the enemies before it gets too dangerous. But again, it just, like, runs in and gets destroyed. So, like, it's cool. It works. There, there might be, like, some extra tech and more complex builds around it. But as we've learned from Tears of the Kingdom, like, the simpler the build, the better. The best flying machine, or, like, just the best vehicle in the game, is a steering stick and two fans. A one-wheel scooter is taking over compared to two-wheel bikes and four-wheel cars. And like I said, like, you just put beam emitters on a hoverstone and you have, like, the best mob farmer in the game. So there's more simple things that perform better than the homing cart, and it just kind of gets itself destroyed, so C tier. Even though it's really cool. I give the, like, Roomba S tier for how neat it is, but in practicality, it doesn't really work out. And then the last one, Construct Head S tier. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't say the steering stick is the best thing in the game because the Construct Head is the best thing in the game being able to direct your weapons at enemies having the auto targeting to where you don't have to have it on some kind of vehicle you don't have to have it on something you're controlling is what makes it cracked the game would be 50 times less fun without the construct head homing weapon battle bots are cool and the construct head makes it possible so that's why it gets the s tier and also just the best Zonai device in the game. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.